Hello, Maya is based on a scripting language which is responsible for the success of Maya really. It's not only a very rich software as we all know but it's also basically quite open to scripting from outside so everybody can write a script and the scripting language was embedded on, in version 1 of Maya already and it's called M-E-L, MEL that's Maya Embedded Language and basically Maya is based on MEL. Of course there's a lot of compiled code which you cannot access, it's pri uh, pr pr proprietary code of course, but uh, you can uh, enter many things from outside. So for example Pixar, they do scripting all the time because they have programmers which make th certain things very efficient. And I'll give you a taste for this, just a very brief taste and in this drawing I did you see Mel is the whole universe, that's the whole <laughs> painting maybe uh, and the little dot at the bottom right is what we'll cover in this tutorial. So with the new scene you go to the right corner here and click on this icon here. Uh, the script editor opens and it consists of two parts. The top one is what Maya does and the bottom one is what you type in. So you can see there's a cursor blinking already and waiting for our happy uh, entry here. Python is the next tab uh, and you can alternatively program everything in Python. Python is a much more universal language. You can use it for programming machines for, for example. Uh, but it's not uh, totally different from MEL in the command syntax. So uh, once you know about Python you can program MEL and the other way around. So um, we'll stick to Mel and what we'll type in here is Sphere. And while I typed it, it turned blue. That means Maya knows something about this word. You have two keys on your keyboard. One is the return key, which jumps into the next line. That's the return key. I open one line after the other. And the other key is the enter key, uh, which executes commands here. It's the same as using this icon here. So let's press enter now and what Maya just did, it created a sphere, it's a NURBS sphere and here in the upper part it told us what it exactly did. The result was creating a NURBS sphere 1, that's that one, that one actually, and a make NURBS sphere 1 right here. Now let's type in move 10 zero two and press enter again no error message it moved the selected object to 10 in X 0 in Y and 2 in Z and it's there now in order to see what's happening in the perspective uh, window while we type in things here let's just dock this script editor down here so I'll move it down here until it changes yes uh, the uh, the transparency and then we're here we can adjust the sizes right here okay so we moved it 10 0 and 2 and now we move it back move 0 0 0 and since I mistyped move I omitted the E it's not blue and now it is blue and I can exit uh, execute that command so it's sitting at the very center again. Of course I can scale it 3, 5, 0 0.2 and that's the very thin and quite high sphere we have. So we create a new scene now and we want to create a torus and since we don't know the command to create a torus, let's just click on this icon. And you see the torus is called polytorus with lots of little values here. So let's delete it and copy this line, the whole line here, and paste it here and we'll change a few values. R stands, as you might have guessed, for radius. Let's increase the radius from 1 to 3. And here you have um, subdivisions, I guess that is in Y. Let's reduce them to 2 from 20. 
and execute that command. So that's the torus we have now with this command. And uh, when we paste the previous one again and execute it, we have the two toruses right here. Now, new scene. We want to place an object randomly in the scene. How do we do this? Polycube. What do you think about that? Looks good. Blue. And here is the polycube. Lovely. So let's move it. One, two, three. Does it move? Yes, it does. There's a function which is called random. And Maya knows about it. That's why it is turning blue. The random function works like this. Random and then parentheses or round bracket. And then you type in the value 2, for example, comma 80. And you close that bracket, that uh, parentheses. This is a function which creates a number between, a random number between 2 and 80. For example, 65 or 65.3 point or something. Um, the random function doesn't, is for no use here because uh, at this point, because when we execute it, it just creates a number, but it doesn't do anything with it. It created the number 74.963058. And uh, when we copy and paste it down here and execute it again, it creates a number 68.0.44, etc. So it creates a random number, but it doesn't do anything with it. So we want to use it for the for moving our cube. So let's move the cube to a random number between um, 1 and 4 in x, uh, 0 in y and 0 in z. When we execute this, we get an error. It's called a syntax error. This is a common error in programming called syntax because you use something in the syntax which is not known or where something is wrong and I show you what's ro what's wrong here uh, the move command doesn't want a sub function to execute here well we need to make it separate in two steps and that's what we'll do we'll declare a variable which we call x and x will be a random number between 1 and 4 So we just declare that number now, and now we can type in x here, 0, 0, 0. It will create an error again. And the reason is that when we define a variable, x in this case, it, it's a variable because it's... Oh, one number in the first go and another number in the second go, so it's basically changing all the time, we need a dollar sign ahead of the variable name. So dollar $x is the way to go, and then we need a dollar $x down here as well. And when we execute it now, we get another error, because we didn't conclude our first command with a semicolon. And we can close that in the second line too, and now we have a proper motion of our cube. We can use that random number now, that string, for a rotation. So rotate x, x, x. So it will rotate our cube randomly in all three dimensions. And here you see the rotation. New scene. Let's create a plane. You see it's called polyplane. So next set you can just type in polyplane here and you'll get a polyplane. We want to create duplicates. And that works by typing in duplicate. And since it's selected, it will just create a copy. So we have two 
at the same space now and we can move the selected one well maybe to the right in X 10 and leave the rest where it is and press enter so we have the two two planes now right here let's create a new scene again and type in polycube with a capital C we want 30 of them how do we do this let me type in something and then I explain what I'm doing so I typed in a loop and that's what made computers strong in the first place when they were invented uh, back in the 1930s 40s 50s the amazing thing they could do was repeat stupid operations uh, as many times as you like in our case 30 times so I'm defining a variable and I call it I because that's a standard thing in mathematics you just use I and since it's a variable it has a dollar sign in advance uh, ahead and um, it equals one for this value i starting at one until 30 it shall increase step by step by one that's the double plus here that's you need to know that or uh, see the documentation or try it out so basically this is a loop it starts with the number of 1 it checks whether the current number is lower than 30 if it is it increases the value and in every um, round it executes this command it duplicates our object the currently selected object when I execute this command now pressing the key enter I get lots and lots of cubes 30 in all so they're just sitting at the same place and with a similar command with the for loop you could place them randomly now in the scene but that's not what I'm gonna show you now because we're slowly rounding up this tutorial I want to create a new scene and to show you something totally different type in window enter the result is window 1 but where is it show window and here it is with more flags as they are called and they're all in the documentation of course of Mel you can resize that window rename that window enter buttons in that window so most of the uh, option boxes are made exactly in this way and finally let's go to a, to a website I typed in Fibonacci Mel and Maya Fibonacci was a mathematician Leonardo Fib uh, Fibonacci was that Italian in the medieval times 1200s and um, he created a sequence of numbers uh, which is very beautiful considered still very beautiful for example it makes a spiral or it describes the population increase of cows or other kinds of populations rabbits and here for example you have C CG talk uh, Fibonacci spiral let's click on this and here you see a website and hi I found a nice script on a closed thread which makes a nice golden <laughs> spiral uh, yes the code starts after that here it starts with the declaration of a floating procedure whatever that is and it ends right here so you need to copy that whole part here copy control C and now you paste it down here and guess what's happening when you execute that uh, script using the enter key enter and here you have a spiral it's a Fibonacci spiral now I show you how to get rid of that script editor here just move it somewhere here and close it 
and here you have that spiral and I wish you a very good programming day. Bye bye.